What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was watching my buddy Justin's video the other day. He brought eight 10 out of 10 designer fragrances for 2023 and a few in his video I would have picked as well. And I started thinking about it because a lot of you know I've never given a fragrance a 10. The only 10 I've ever given was in a live stream battle on my buddy EQ's channel when we did the Versense battle. I gave Oligarch Parfum from Roger Parfums a 10 out of 10 in the compliment factor era area. So I started thinking about it. If I was, because a bunch of people have asked me to do this video over the last couple of years, and if I was to pick anything to give that upgrade, to give that boost to a 10 out of 10, what would it be? And I came up with 12, specifically 12. So we're going to discuss those right here and now. And these are some of the best of the best, in my opinion, when it comes to designers. So stay tuned. <laughs> Starting with one of my favorite designer releases from 2022, this is Narciso Rodriguez. For him, Blue Noir Parfum. This is magnificence in a bottle when it comes to powdery iris. So it's a very suede leather heavy type of iris. Nice hefty dose of fresh spice, but this is a very powdery fragrance. You have to like powdery fragrances. This is so well done. It's still faintly on my arm. When I was putting these fragrances together for this video last night to film today, I sprayed it on my arm, and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. It, it, it's magnificent longevity. Early on, it's like cloyingly loud. I've choked people out with this fragrance already. But if you like the very powdery irises, this is one of the best ones I've ever smelled. It's, it's remarkable. It's... A statement maker in the daytime, cooler weather, obviously this is not going to do well in the heat, absolutely not. But in the evenings, this has an alluring profile to it, uh, somewhat of a more matured elegance because it's just so powdery. I mean, you may mistakenly get told that you smell just like baby powder. That's a real possibility. That's happened at, le at least once with me wearing this one but if you can really deep dive into the scent profile there's a lot of spices and like i said this buttery suede note here that really sets it apart don't completely think diorum intense type of family though it can kind of i guess live in that neighborhood it's not living on the same exact street if that makes sense so this is the one that i felt was perfect to start this video off i'd definitely give it a 10 if i was bumping up ratings blue noir parfum it gets it Next, this is a recent acquisition of my collection. This was actually in Justin's video. This is one of the ones I was saying, I'll, hell, I, that one's worthy of a 10. I, I mean, it's hard to argue that. If you want to talk about one of the best citrus fragrances to come out in an extremely long time, we are talking about Terre d'Hermes Eau Gibre. Like I said, you, not much missing from the bottle. I just got this one in the last few weeks. It is so, so good, such quality. It's either citron or grapefruit. It smells like grapefruit, like a very zesty, slightly tart grapefruit. Believable. Citrus that hangs out a long time. It's really floating in the air. Pretty good performer. Six to eight hour range on my skin, believe it or not. Now, it hasn't been super high heat to really test it and really push it. That's coming around the corner for me, but this is so good. This is a must-try fragrance. This is the freshest fragrance I would absolutely be okay with giving a 10 out of 10 to. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the compliment factor is like. I haven't wore it enough yet to get a compliment outside of my wife thinking it smells incredible and of course myself, but I mean, I don't count when it comes to a compliment factor, right? Um, this is so good. If you want citrus dominance, the woodsy note here does kind of smell like the the vetiver that they tend to use in this particular line's DNA it does remotely tie into the line just freshness on a completely different magnitude when it comes to Dare Dare Mez. They they did such a good job on this fragrance and it's one that's worthy of the ranking. And that's Terre Dare Mez Ojibre. Now this is the only Lamal flanker I would think would be worthy of a 10 in my humble opinion. We're back to powdery iris with this one. I've raved about this one in the last several months. It is La Mola Parfum. So you're gonna get a beautiful, fresh, spicy pop at the top of this fragrance in the opening. The cardamom comes off fresh at first. Then it says, settles into a much more warm, spicy, ambery tone with a lot of bright and kind of powder, soft powder, I guess you could say, to the way this iris smells. Again, it smells like a tie-in to that fresh, aromatic, slightly soapy, lavender, minty, vanilla combo that the original is known for, whereas here it amplifies it heavily with some spices and some iris. This is, this is seduction in a bottle right here, guys. So, so good. 
myself, including my wife, huge fans of this one. This is a great evening wear scent, even great in the daytime in the cold weather. Not a warm weather scent whatsoever. In the evenings, climate controlled environment, you can get away with whatever the hell you want to wear. You don't really have to worry about it being too cloying, but this is one that I don't think they could have done a better job with taking Lamal, tweaking it to the point of elegance and class that powdery iris can bring to a fragrance while also not making it a very serious dressy occasion powdery fragrance like it's not so floral dominant that you feel like you need a sports jacket a blazer a suit and tie or anything like that because some floral dominant male men's fragrances will give you that feeling this one here this is laid back while still being sexy and seductive just magnificence in a bottle performance is stellar on this one it's just right in my opinion without being overwhelming doesn't really leave a ton of room for discovery depending on how you spray it can but the longevity is there as well just like i said magnificence in a bottle jean-paul gaultier's le mal le parfum now when it comes to the stronger with you line everybody's got their favorites for me it's hands down stronger with you absolutely this is so good this stays true to the original's dna even has some of that toffee sweetness from intensely though i don't recall it being listed in the notes i do smell it it's warm it's spicy but it's also boozy without being too much. Like the rum here kind of rounds everything off to take the edges off the sweetness, the bite off of the spice. You still get that roasted chestnut smell in the dry down. This is a kind of a night out having drinks with your lady where you're expecting quite the eventful night and ending to your evening. This again, seduction in a bottle this goes right back to it just a different type this is a more fun fragrance this is more of a naughty sexy aroma because of it's so warm spicy and boozy at its core this is this is so good it's harder to find from discounters at this point at the recording of this hopefully stock becomes much more readily available i'm gonna try to have links to everything down below to try to make it easier for you guys to find it in the event you want to pick something up but the line's full of great fragrances all of the flankers have something really good to offer, but for me, in my opinion, the one I would rate the highest, the best smelling one, and I mean, it's a monster performer, is hands down, Stronger With You, absolutely. Recently discontinued, I had to have this in here. Uh, I'm actually wearing the O flanker from this particular line. We're talking about the Gucci Guilty line, by the way. I'm currently wearing as my scent of the day, Pour Homme O, the fresher iris fragrance in the line. Whereas if you want, I guess the most niche crowd targeted, and it's not like, I wouldn't put it in the category of niche for quality, though it is a very high quality smell. I would say based a niche crowd, like it's only going to be for certain people. It's a little on the polarizing side. Is Gucci Guilty absolute? This is, when it comes to woodsy green and leather, oh man, I don't, I don't know if it can get any better than this. Regardless of price point, no matter what house, is offering it this makes a statement this is impressive I had a sample a decant before I got this bottle I was fortunate to get a great price on a tester just came in a white tester box it's still full presentation I still smell it floating in the air this is outdoor woodsy and green a lot of cypress here but the leather is on the drier side of things it's a little on the smoky side as well that adds to that dryness of the aroma it's been called very daring over the years by many people where if you're used to the more mass peeling stuff, I could see that point being very valid. Though for me personally, I just think it's so stunning, captivating. It grabs me every time I smell it. It's still floating in the air. This is such an uber masculine, crazy good men's fragrance. I mean, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say what, it, what I feel. It's crazy good. This is an experience worth having. If you're a fan of leather at all, dry woodsy smoky herbal fragrances if you like that style regardless of the leather this is a must try it's still available pretty easily for a pretty good price in the hundred dollar realm 80 to a hundred dollar range for 50 to 90 ml depending on the bottle size from discounters online it's right in the range or slightly below retail pricing at the recording of this video still now i'm not saying jump out and blind buy it because it might not be for you but if you can get a decant somewhere online and try it while they're still readily available and not ridiculously priced i would encourage you to do so so because if there was ever a gucci fragrance that deserved a 10 from me it's gucci guilty absolute
pour on. Now you guys know me, we gotta have a blue fragrance on here and I've dubbed this the king of the blue fragrances. I think until further notice, it is on the mountaintop when it comes to the best blue fragrance money can buy. That is my opinion, of course, with Bleu de Chanel Parfum. So if you're looking for a projection room filling monster, you need to look elsewhere. This is not that. What this is, is a warm, rich, and refined take on one of, if not the most popular blue fragrance DNA ever created, that being Bleu de Chanel. Obviously, you, I would dare to say that the EDT and the EDP sell more than this, because this is, I don't know, this is just so much more elegant for a blue fragrance. I've dubbed it as the best blue fragrance for a suit and tie. It's a very professional smell for being synthetic. There's Isui Super, but there's a bunch of soft and warm woods. It still has a lemon zestiness at the top. Very warm and ambery. This is so good. There's not a whole lot of Isui Super fragrances that I'm a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of this one. I get every bit of 10 hours on my skin as well. 10 to 12 hours easily. The longevity is not an issue for me. Projection is where it takes a back seat. It wears heavier. It wears like a true high oil parfum concentration where it's got a lingering dense cloud around you. The aroma lingers. It's a thick smell, but it's not going to really scream and push off of the skin. Like I said, if you're looking for room fillers, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for the ultimate take on scent profile, and class and elegance from a blue fragrance. In the blue fragrance genre of all things, I think if there was ever a blue fragrance to warrant a 10, in my mind, it's Bleu de Chanel Parfum. Now this one may surprise some of you because some are gonna say, well, what about the Parfum? What about Profumo? Oh this, oh that. There's a bunch of great flankers in this line and for me, once I got a hold of this one, I fell in love. My wife fell in love. It's our favorite Armani Code flanker. Uh, it's become my favorite Armani Code Flanker. It's Code Eau de Parfum. It offers a bit of versatility for the Code line while still offering that same level of sex appeal, seduction, and evening appropriateness of the original's DNA. Before this came around, the Profumo was my favorite version. And then the Parfum came around after this, obviously. The Parfum, to me, Smells like this plus powdery iris. And you would think, based on my love for iris, we've discussed two of them already in this video, that would automatically be my favorite version of Code. Not the case. The characteristics of this scent profile, the fresh, the green, spicy tone that I get at the top with that Tonka Bean Absolute, that beautiful, rich, powdery, sweet, vanillic tone that this one has. <sighs> this does it for me. Still smells like code. That's the best part for me. It still smells like the original code. And I wouldn't necessarily call it a warmer take because typically a higher oil concentration is going to warm up a bit more. It's actually got a little bit of a fresh cooling, almost ice cream like effect from the vanillic tone of the Tonka bean here. Not completely, but kind of, sort of. I find the star anise and stuff like that in the original warm and spice this fragrance differently than the Eau de Parfum Flanker. This is pure sex appeal. When, If you ask my wife, this is one of the sexiest fragrances she has ever smelled. I said in the review, it makes her go gaga. This is one of those fragrances for my wife in particular. Am I guaranteeing you'll have the same results? Who knows? There's no way to guarantee that. You just got to try it for yourself. But again, I go back to if there's the if there's, you're going to hear that a lot in this video. If there's an Armani Code Flanker that could warrant a 10 out of 10 from me, Hands down, it's gotta be Armani Code Eau de Parfum. Now when I smell this fragrance, it gets me very excited. This was one of my favorite designer releases of 2022. It is sweet, it is tropical. The iris here is not super powdery floral like some of the others in this video. This is more of a soapy floral tone. Bright, fresh greens, tropical, juicy fruits, and a powdery sweet tonka bean. It is Le Beau Le Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier. We have two JPG fragrances here, two different lines. While I absolutely adore the Eau de Toilette, fresh bergamot, coconut, sweet powdery tonka bean, the note breakdown as you see is exactly as you smell it. Here there's, it's deeper, it's richer, it's more complex, it's a stronger fragrance, it's fruitier, and it's very much a sweeter fragrance. This is a certified banger in my opinion. Holy crap, this is so good. Um, it's not easy to find either, and even when you do find it, you're going to spend over $100. You're going to spend in the realm of retail on this one. For a 4.2 ounce like this, you're going to spend in that realm. Gotta smell it. 
just floating around engulfing the airspace. It is magnificent. Oh my God, this is such a good scent profile. If you've ever sampled this one, you probably agree with me. Now, not everything's for everyone. You may think, oh, it's terrible. I don't know what you're talking about. This is what I would consider upgrading their existing ratings, which all of these have 8.5s and above from me. And this is me upgrading them to a 10 because, like I said in the beginning of the video, if I was to upgrade some ratings and consider 10s, these are the 12 that come to mind that deserve it from me because I just appreciate them so much. And that's the case here. The pineapple is juicy, fruity, and a bit sweet. And it goes really, really well with the coconut here. The coconut doesn't give too much of a sunscreen vibe. It's a great performer. This is another one, 10 plus hours, easily on skin. And it's quite loud for about two solid hours. It's very strong. This is gonna grab people. It's super attractive. This is a compliment magnet, very charismatic type of fragrance. This is gonna draw people in. Even though it's sweet, I wouldn't veer away from this on a hot summer's day. This is one of those sweet fragrances that just works no matter when. You want that tropical vibe, this will provide it. And then Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Le Parfum. I was very torn when it came to this because I had to include something from Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue line. And I give a lot of credit and props to Light Blue O Intense, and I love the original. But, in my opinion, the best flanker to come out in years, years, you hear me? This one excites me to wear, is Light Blue Italian Love. I just recently finally have a bottle. I had a decant last year. This is last year at the recording of this, the summer flanker that came out. So it is very similar to Light Blue Forever that came out the previous year. They got a ton of hype. Great grapefruit based uh, type of take on the scent profile. Here you still get a similar note breakdown. You get the grapefruit, but it's more bergamot forward, I find, than the grapefruit this time around. And the biggest difference is the hefty dose that I get of the patchouli. Earthy green, aquatic, a little creamy and musky. Just this bitterness, like seaweed type of smell to it. Oh, it's, it just works. It's so, it's such an authentic, salty sea breeze type of feel. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. I'm a big fan of these salty sea breeze by the beach, saltwater Gulf of Mexico, hanging out by a pier, you know, ankle deep, knee deep in the water. What all of those scenarios, that type of aroma, I'm a sucker for. I have a bunch of fragrances that smell like that and ev evoke that type of feeling and visual when you smell them. This one does a lot of that for me, but just really excites me and makes me happy when I smell it. Above average performer, not a beast by any means. Six to eight hour range and longevity on my skin, which I would consider great considering the freshness. I think this is going to be, until further notice, the one to knock off the light blue mantle for me. While light blue O Intense comes really, really, really freaking close to me with this one, because that's the best performing one. It's a true intense flanker. The best smelling one's still the original in my opinion, but the total package here, the one that could really add up the scores to get as close as possible to a 10 overall, the one that I'm willing to upgrade to a 10 overall, for me, it's easily light blue Italian love. So another blue fragrance that I would put in here that's gonna take a close proximity to Bleu de Chanel Parfum is the YSL Y line. No secret if you've been watching me for a while, huge fan of the entire line. But there is a favorite. There is a favorite, and again, it, I had to think, which one am I willing to upgrade their rating, their overall rating from my reviews, to a 10? Which one deserves it? Which one is the one? If I had to just keep one, what would be the one? Well, that's the one that gets the 10, right? So it's got to be Y Le Parfum. The newest one to my collection, not the newest one to come out. The newest one to come out is the Eau de Parfum Intense. Get this to focus. That would just be fantastic. There we go. So beautiful black bottle with the black Y going around the black cap. So here, the, you don't lose the brightness of the aldehydes in the Eau de Toilette while still maintaining a lot of the sweetness from the Eau de Parfum. This is really a great balance in the best of both worlds between the EDT and the EDP, in my humble opinion. The grapefruit aldehydes combo also, I almost give this kind of sweet fizzy orange smell. Maybe that's the sweetness to the apple tying into it. Just the accord that it creates. The ginger is very crisp, bright and spicy. You still get that blue aromatic sage. And then you have a lot of that salty ambergris tie-in. Even though I don't remember it being in the note breakdown, that is part of the original's DNA. And I do get it here, especially as it dries. That clean, musky, almost aquatic-like feel. 
that that synthetic ambergris brings to the table. Great performer, very long lasting, not quite as bright and loud as the Eau de Toilette, and even not quite as loud as the Eau de Parfum. That's really the strongest in the line. This one has kind of EDP longevity. Why EDP longevity? With kind of the in-between of why EDT and why EDP's projection. So very strong across the board. I wouldn't call it an absolute beast, maybe like a mini beast, if you will. Because if you spray this one a little on the heavier side, it'll get really strong, really cloying, and really fill a hefty part of the airspace around you. This is just such a great fragrance, in my opinion. One of my favorite blues I've ever added to my collection. So it had to be here, because I had to have something from the Y line. And like I said before, if I'm picking the one, it's going to be the one to get the upgrade in rating, and this one deserves it, in my opinion. Again, that's YSLY, Le Parfum. So this next one is a flanker to one of the greatest men's fragrances of all time, especially designers. One of the greatest men's designers of all time. Still highly sold and very worn to this day. We're talking about Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Joe, but here, the one that I think will never be topped. At the recording of this, they have a new Parfum, which is basically just a rebottling of this one. We're talking about Aqua de Gio Profumo. So there's all kinds of greatness going on here, guys. Ultra versatile, one of the most versatile fragrances ever. Highly charismatic, strong compliment magnet. This draws people in. Great performer, true to the DNA, refined and slightly matured from the original. Doesn't smell as synthetic, still has the aquatic notes, still has the green feel, but this incense and the earthy patchouli combo darken this fragrance up and kind of liven it up in many ways. It's so good. And it dresses up really well. For a fresh aquatic, this dresses up really, really well. Like I said, it's the refined take on Aqua de Joe. It's amazing. And I will get a decant and try the new Parfum because the note breakdown is the same as this one. Um, even the color scheme matches, even though it's a gradients versus just straight up black translucence like this. So a lot of people are excited for it. I definitely want to try it out, see how close it is in performance and scent profile. If so, it's just a rebottling. Maybe there's slight differences, maybe there isn't. But it's worth talking about the greatness of this one because I truly believe this will never be topped in this line. There's room for me to eat those words one day, who knows. But since this came out, there's been a bunch of great flankers. But none that I would consider to knock this one off the mantle and take the 10 out of 10 like this one can take the 10 out of 10. And that's Aqua de Jo Profumo. Last but not least, I kind of saved the best for last. We got one more Iris fragrance. You should know Iris fragrances are going to be on here for me. It's my favorite note in perfumery. I've dubbed this one of the five best fragrances I have ever smelled in my life. So if I was going to upgrade something to a 10 out of 10, which this one I think I gave a 9 Maybe even a 9.5 when I did a full review. I don't remember exactly. It's been a long time since I did the review. I have two bottles of this. I wanted to make sure that the sprays outlive me, if need be. With Dior Homme Parfum, this is the 75 ml, and I have another bottle of the 75 ml that's still sealed. I kind of strictly wear this one in the winter. It's a monster. I've never sprayed it more than four times. I never will. It's so strong. It's, I've clocked it at 16, 17 hours before taking a shower, and it's still going pretty strong. The Siage never really calms down to get to a skin scent. It's animalistic. It's so leather forward. It's rough and tumble. It's a little rosy, like this thick jammy rose. The Iris isn't completely the star of the show. The original, the Iris, is the star of the show. The Intense, it's intensified with the Iris here. It takes a little bit of a backseat to the early stages of the leather rose combo. And supposedly there's a little bit of oud in here, but it might be just adding to that animalic tone. As it dries down, it becomes more of a creamy sandalwood fragrance. This stuff... <sighs> masterpiece. This stuff is a masterpiece. There's no fragrance in this video, in my opinion, that deserves a bump to 10 out of 10 more than this fragrance. I have never smelled the 100 milliliter bottle formulation. I've heard it's pretty much the same thing, then I've heard it's fresher and doesn't perform as well. I've heard all these things. I may never find out, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get a decant to compare the two, but I couldn't be happier to have two bottles of the 
classic masterpiece, in my opinion, the modern classic, because this came out in 2014, changed after 2019. 2020 was when they changed to the 100 ml bottles and pretty much became a European exclusive. It's very difficult to get here in the States. But if you've never gotten your nose on this and you like iris or leather, you really are missing out on a wonderful olfactive experience because if there was ever a more fitting fragrance than this, it would be in this video, in my opinion. But this is the king of the mountain. I saved the best for last. The most deserving of a 10 out of 10 from designers from me is definitely Diorome Parfum. Well, that was my 12, that if I was gonna bump some, upgrade some ratings to 10 out of 10, which ones would it be? It was these 12 designers. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What in this video have you tried? Do you agree? Do you disagree? It's all good in the hood. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 12 and you give them a spray now, you'll probably end up thanking me later because they just got upgraded. They're now officially 10 out of 10s on this channel. Have a good one, guys.